Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Death's Shadow and its price graph, as well as what cards or what characteristics to look for when you're trying to pick up something the next Death Shadow. And I can tell you there is a card currently that no one's playing that should the meta shift correctly, it will be a $20 card just like this one from Bulk. So in the very beginning, RTR and Gatecrash, those two sets introduced, reintroduced the Shocklands, which then made Modern more popular because the Shocklands were no longer a, they were no longer the bottleneck of the format because they became super cheap. So the Shocklands came back, the card was still 50 cents, sub 50 cents. I believe I saw it for a quarter, and there's a lot of people saying they bought hundreds of this for a quarter, which is, may or may not be true. So then it goes up in price a little bit at Dragon Maze, because it's seeing play in a tier 4 deck. I remember seeing the deck and saying, oh, it's not any good. The deck resembles what it resembles today, which is a aggro build, uh, and you're going to lose a ton of life from the shocks and the fetches. Now, it, it just dips down, so it doesn't really hit five. Let's say it's four and a half, and then continues to dip down until we get to Dragons of Tarkir, where it now becomes a tier 2.5 deck, and people are saying good stuff about it. People are writing articles, and then the spike. So, Oath of the Gatewatch is a very critical point for most modern cards. At this point in time, modern is picking up popularity. People are enjoying modern. Uh, it is the Aldrazi Winter, so people are try, trying new decks. Oath of the Gatewatch is where we had the Displacer, we had the we had a very strong Aldrazi Modern deck, so people were playing decks that countered that, and this is one of them. If you are going getting smacked in the face oh, time and time again, why don't you just drop a one drop 10-10? See how they get past that. And they don't have any lightning bolts, they don't have any direct damage, so you actually now have the best creature on the field for one black. And then it kind of dips down again until eventually it started winning tournaments. And that's the key here. The key is when you look at the chart, it doesn't really go up in price and it hits $22.95 until it starts winning. So having a fun, casual, rogue deck build, that's all good that's all good, but that's not really the cause of a spike. A card doesn't get to $20 or over or $15 or over unless it actually starts winning stuff. And it will continue uh, to be relevant in that format. Now, something else happens. So it spikes and then it naturally goes down and then there's a banning on a card that is useful, but not necessary. And that's the key word, it is not necessary is Gataxian Probe. Gataxian Probe does everything you want. You don't need to be in colors, so pretty much it's colorless. You can play it in your deck, even if you have all, even if you don't have the colors that you need for it, you can play it. It doesn't cost anything. You'd pay two life, which in this case is a advantage because the life loss allows you and the ability to control the life loss in a productive way where you do get a card, you do get to see your opponent's hand, and you don't have to uh, care about your mana base because you can pay the fraction mana of two life. It's very, very good. But it turned out the deck did not need it, and the deck just continued on without its four Gitaxian probes. Uh, my feeling about that is every deck played four Gitaxian probes, so it's not like this deck got better, it just, got the same as every other deck, which is fine for the format. So overall, when you're looking for a next Death Shadow type of card, a card that is bulk now, but in four or five years could be the heart of a tier one deck in modern or whatever eternal format we will have at the time, you have to look at A, the power level. The power level of this is crazy. A one drop pot potentially Let's just assume it's like a 12-12, right? A one drop 12-12 at best. Uh, it's a 5-5 most times at worst for one. It's bigger than Tamagoyf a lot of times in the deck that plays it. So you have a lot going for it in terms of power level. And you have a lot of things that you can control. So the other part is can you control it? 
Uh, that means can you sacrifice life? Can you? It's based on your life, not your opponent's life. If it was based on your opponent's life, and I bet you there's a few cards like this, it would be very bad. But because you can control, you can always fetch shock yourself, lightning bolt yourself through the face, and your opponent is probably trying to kill you too, this card becomes exceedingly good because you are going to naturally do those things and lose that life anyway. And your opponent is going to want to naturally attack you unless they're playing a combo deck or control deck. So Death Shadow... One of the most interesting speculations I've seen recently, and the price graph shows the ups and the downs and the ups and downs of this card. And there will be another card that's currently printed, currently does not see play in a meta, but is equally strong as Death Shadow. And that card in a few years will be worth $20 as well. It will spike. I cannot tell you what card that is. You have to do a lot of research and be lucky. A lot of times it's about being lucky. So I don't have any doubt that you could have bought 200 copies, 300 copies of this card for under 50 cents at one time. Now, if you believe in the card, and by definition, because it's 50 cents in a bulk, you're probably the only one at that time that believes in the card, and it goes up in price to over $20 that's going to build your collection. You will never have to spend money on magic for another two, three years because you can just trade a Death Shadow for $15 a draft. You can trade a Death Shadow for multiple FNM entries. You can trade a Death Shadow for whatever standard card you need. And that's the ability of picking correctly. It doesn't mean that you're going to be rich or you're going to be great. It doesn't mean you're going to be rich, but it means that you will be able to continue playing Magic for that very low investment of, let's say, 50 cents at 200 copies. What does that equal? That's like 100 bucks. For $100, I guarantee you, that's like 200 drafts that you can do. And I would, I would readily trade, you know, a draft credit for what our drafts are $12. So $12 for an $18 card that is very liquid. That's no, a no brainer for me to do. So anyway, Death Shadow, very good card. Leave me a comment below if you have any cards you are currently interested in. Bye guys.